we uh, do have to understand that the presence of other political forces, um, this far right, far left, will definitely uh, create additional uh, challenges. Hello, Ukraine has been implementing an association agreement with the EU since 2017. Ukraine should be able to participate in some EU policies and to benefit from some, some EU funding instruments before being a full member of the EU. But it will be difficult to uh, change uh, drastically the situation in this, uh, in this area for a number of reasons. And it's clear that uh, all Ukrainians I have met uh, are affected by the, the tragedy uh, that uh, they are living. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euroland, of course. And I'm your host, Matt Wick. In this episode, we discuss how Ukraine's integration into the EU may be under threat. If you want to learn more about this subject, please continue watching this video and don't forget to press subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Ivana klimpushin satsin Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine for European Integration, expresses her hopes that significant work and agreements will be completed before Hungary assumes the EU Council presidency in July. This is crucial to prevent potential delays in the processes during Hungary's term. Let's listen in full. Well, first of all, I would expect that, um, and I would hope that before the end of June, during the Belgian presidency, Ukraine will um, see the result of this internal discussions. And on the top of the decision of the European Commission, we will see the decision of the European Council that uh, the negotiation framework with Ukraine will be adopted, the first intergovernmental conference will take place, and that means that during the Hungarian presidency we will be just working on our screening, we'll start the negotiations, we'll work on the uh, tasks that uh, that are necessary for the country to transform and to understand uh, what is the priority on this or that stage, but uh, not to delay our European integration. Huge Mingarelli ambassador and head of the EU delegation to Ukraine from 2016 to 2019 is next and highlights that Hungary will do anything to make sure Ukraine's accelerated integration into the EU will not happen, making the last week of June a crucial time for potential developments to overcome Hungary's veto. He suggests that measures could be taken to reform the unanimity principle in the EU's foreign policy decision-making, and also notes that Ukraine could gradually benefit from some EU advantages even before it officially joins the EU. Let's take a listen in full. When uh, Hungary holds uh, the EU rotating presidency, you can be sure that uh, Hungary will not try to accelerate Ukraine accession to the EU. And therefore, it is important, I believe, that uh, the negotiating format framework that the Commission uh, proposed to our member states in mid-March be approved by the end of June under the Belgian presidency. I really hope that uh, it will be possible in the last week of June to get the European Council approval of the negotiating uh, framework so that during the summer the uh, concrete negotiation mm -hmm. can start. The Commission has already made some proposal in this uh, in this respect. For instance, the Commission proposed to uh, shift from the unanimity to the qualified majority voting, voting for opening uh, the negotiation of each of the 33 chapters uh, under which Ukraine will have to uh, take an over uh, the uh, acquis communautaire. And therefore, Everybody is aware of the fact that uh, it would be in the, the EU interest as well as Ukraine interest to reduce uh, the, the areas uh, uh, in which we have to go through uh, uh, unanimity. 
and uh, to privilege a qualified majority voting. But it will be difficult to uh, change uh, drastically the situation in this, uh, in this area for a number of reasons. Now back to Ivana. She emphasizes the importance of centrist and social democratic parties maintaining as many seats as possible to uphold a pro-European stance. She acknowledges that the rise of the far-right factions will create additional challenges for Ukraine, but stresses that the responsibility to counter these forces lies not only with Ukraine, but with other European countries. Well, I'm sure that we unfortunately will see the increase of the presence of the far right and far left political forces in presence, their presence in the European Parliament. But I would hope that, again that the uh, kind of centrist parties like ENP, or oh, sorry, EPP, uh, ENP, that's Ukrainian acronym, um, Social Democrats, um, Renew, uh, Greens will uh, preserve as many places as possible to form this majority that would be a Eurocentric, uh, not skeptical towards Europe itself and European Union itself, and also positively and uh, supportively uh, further working on Ukrainian file with Ukraine in order to ensure that we are commonly progressing to common European peace and security and also to wider Europe uh, and uh, the process of enlargement. Obviously, at the same time, we uh, do have to understand that the presence of other political forces, um, this far right, far left, will definitely uh, create additional uh, challenges for the, um, for the continuation of the current European policy including towards Ukraine, including towards stronger Europe. And uh, that means that everybody who will be inside and who is outside as, as we are at this uh, time will have to increase their efforts uh, in terms of protecting the agenda and in terms of explaining this further to the societies to regain their, uh, their support. Mingarelli describes Ukrainians as resilient in the challenge posed by war, emphasizing their strength and unwavering refusal to accept a ceasefire under Russian terms, telling how Ukraine is determined to continue the fight for as long as possible. But it's clear that uh, all Ukrainians I have met uh, are affected by the, the tragedy uh, that uh, they are living. But at the same time, they are showing an unbelievable resistance. Uh, and I have not heard anybody saying uh, we should stop and accept uh, a ceasefire under Russian conditions. Uh, all Ukrainians I saw, I met, uh, were very clear on the fact that uh, they could not imagine uh, Ukraine uh, being turned into uh, the kind of uh, society which exists today under the Putin regime. And therefore that determination is there and I'm sure that they will fight as much as they can to, uh, to live in a, in, a, in a free country, in an open society. You've been watching the special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro-Atlantic Course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in flames. In the description under this video, you can find more information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!